Hey, Don here. Okay, now that's my uh, drum base setup utility. I think yeah, I think that's the BIOS portion of the uh, HP. Getting set down here. HP DL three eighty G seven. Um, get situated here. Um, it's my my uh, <clears throat> server that I use for my desktop machine. Um, it's the only one I got, but anyway, that's what I'm using it for. <clears throat> and um, so, uh, our, one of the hard drives it went bad, and I swapped. I have it set up in a RAID 5, and I'm using six. There's eight drives. Uh, HP drive, branded drives, and I had two of them that I was, you know, uh, not formatted on, in, in put in the uh, array because I wanted to have them in case the drives fell because I knew they had a bad reputation of failing. And sure enough, um, one of them, first one, I pedaled around with it, and I, I thought maybe I could find an adapter that I could... Uh, plug into it and check it out with software that I have, Linux software, but uh, I didn't have anything. So the only way I can check it, you know, run any software on it or anything, is with it in the machine. Well, as soon as the machine recognizes a problem, it turns it off, and so then you can't access it. And uh, so I swapped the, one of the other two, and I had formatted them. Uh, I run Fedora 32 Linux on here, and I uh, formatted them with... Uh, a tool in Cockpit, uh, it's a remote admin app that, that uh, Fedora, it's a Red Hat app, actually, you know, servers from the, the, the granddaddy of Fedora is Red Hat Linux. So anyway, um, and Fedora is the open source project of Red Hat. So uh, Red Hat's proprietary. Uh, you can get it for free now if you, uh, for, you know, if you sign up as a developer, but I imagine it's some of it's limited, you know, some of its functionality. And, um, and Fedora's, there's nothing limited on it. So I've used it since 2005. So anyway, <clears throat> that and Debane, too, a little bit. So, now what's been happening? Okay, so I put, I put the, it was drive, uh, Bay 8. I put it over into the one, I can't remember which one was uh, blinking a yellow light, and, they, and it was saying, pre-failure, you know. Uh, I swapped out the other one, the one in Bay 8, with uh, whichever one. I think it might have been a Bay 3, and that's the one I have a problem with now. So I took it out of 8, put it in that one, and it's been a couple of months or more. And uh, I thought yeah, I thought that it had, you know, recovered the data and done all that stuff, although I never did really say, see it. Uh, I need to go look in the manual again. It's been two or three years since I bought the thing, and I don't remember uh, if it tell you, you know, when it boots up, we got a, the previous video shows these menus over and over. So, and this is where I'm at right now. This is what it did today. So, um, I'm trying to get turned around in circles. I start, I wanted to start at the beginning to try to lay it out, but uh, what's been going on. So, that drive, the first drive that gave trouble, I went ahead and, and it finally just took it out of the tray and put the tray back in there so the airflow would be normal. Uh, because it kept squawking, you know, it being in there. I tried to stick it in Bay 8, swapping the drives, you know. Uh, so I ended up taking it out. And uh, I couldn't do any real testing. I don't think I was able to even, like I said, I don't think I was even able to access it at all because uh, it gets turned off by the server automatically when there's a problem with it. They they turn it off. It still would blink. It would have a yellow light or a blink yellow, I can't remember. Uh, I think it went from yellow light to red light. That's what it did. And it probably it may just be bad, you know, so there's nothing I can do, do with it. Okay, now, a couple of months later, uh, no drive in Bay 8. I still have drive 6 that I could use uh, because it's not in this, ray, this array of, of 6 drives uh, that I use from operating system. <clears throat> but... Um, so it came up with the menu saying uh, previous uh, data recovery failed, 
hit F1 to, to try to run data recovery or hit F2 to skip it. So I've been hitting F1 and I have a hard time reading uh, fast enough. The screen's, you know, like 20 second timeout's not long enough for me. I, I can't find my place again. Once I hit something and it moves, then I can't find my place again before it and start reading, figuring everything out before it uh, moves on. So that's probably why I was so turned around because I kept thinking it's automatically running it, which it does, I believe. Uh, yeah, I saw it saying that. I went back and looked at screenshots I had made of my video, and I saw it does automatically try to run it. But I've also done it by hitting F1 for the last three boots. Three, three, three four days I've been trying to uh, get it to run. And I thought, okay, it just doesn't give you any readout. It just, because what it would do, it would, uh, I'd watch the lights and they'd blink and stuff. Maybe I was looking at the lights too much, too long, and I should have been looking at the screen, how I missed stuff. But anyway, it, uh, it would just go on to the operating system. So at one point I thought, okay, it's not running it. Then the next, then after a day or so, I thought, okay, no, it is running it. But the original thing I had expected when I hit F1, I expected to go to some kind of screen. Because of something that's set on, on the screen at one point, that I would go somewhere and I would have to turn it on, you know, in there. Well, today I had a, it, it stopped. Or it was, well, I was watching it boot. And it said, uh, you know, F1 or F2. And uh, I hit F1, and this time it goes here. ROM-based setup utility, and I'm pretty well certain that is what you usually call the BIOS, you know, in a desktop. And uh, and usually that's what are in, say, other brands of uh, servers, because I've seen, watched a lot of videos on I, 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 Morton, uh, my Playhouse channel is IBM's, this is the one he mostly does. He calls it BIOS, you know, he's a server admin guy, that's what he does, so they don't, they got their own cute little names for things here in Hewlett Packard. Uh, so, um, so here we go. System options. Oh, and my keyboard's not working. That's the other problem, and I believe that's a separate issue. I have a, a long. Oh, my server's in the closet, and over here is the other side of the room, and uh, I have about a 15-foot USB cable with a power, basically a boost. Uh, basically a voltage regulator in the circuit to keep it from uh, I'm gonna turn on well yeah I'm gonna turn on my uh, oh it's already on okay I have a wireless keyboard and I have the uh, the dongle plugged into the uh, plugged into the machine itself and so it works it, it uh, even when you don't have it on the, the keyboard turned on the other day I was able to turn it on and it picked up right away but I think it's that 3.0 hub that's plugged into the extension cable and it's power too it has a, a, a little wall wart to power it so I wouldn't expect it's a power problem because I've got the voltage regulator in the 15 foot cable power supply to the USB 3.0 hub and of course my cable for my uh, USB keyboard and that's uh, won't reach over there you know um, I could plug it straight into that long cable I, that's how I originally had it and I didn't have trouble with the uh, keyboard not working right I guess I could do that but not right now I'll just go on like I am um, so that's been turning me around and around, and uh, and I forget things ever. If you know, give me a week and I forget, or a month for sure, I'm going to forget a lot of these little things I've figured out. So um, so I go in circles. So anyway, let's make sure the uh, you okay. So yeah, the wireless keyboard is going to work. Modify system specific options. I'm looking at the bottom there. System options, power management. Okay, yeah, I've been in here quite a bit setting things up the way I wanted it. PCI device, okay, PCI RQ, PCI device enable, disable. <coughs> <coughs> okay, um, standard boot order, IPL. Hmm. Okay, boot controller order, okay, date and time, server availability. Okay. Server security, file serial console, and EMS. Oh, okay, yeah. Server asset te text options. Hmm. Some of this stuff I don't remember seeing. I'm kind of wondering if it is in a different area. I don't think so, though. I think I just forgot. Advanced options, default options, utility language. 
Okay, so I, I don't see anything that makes me think I would get to run the uh, data recovery from here right off the bat. So I'll just have to work my way through these menus. And on the right, you can, it tells you exactly what the machine is and what it has. Dell 380G7. Um, it's 64 gigabyte of RAM, 65536 megabyte of RAM. Hmm, I didn't realize that it would show up as it's really 65. Well, I guess it's. Yeah. yeah, and then two, uh, two six-core processors, 2.53 gigahertz. Um, and of course, some of that I, I know is why I'm adding into what it says there. Serial port, embedded NICs. Okay, I don't want to mess with anything that uh, everything else is working fine. Or mats, memory protection, USB options. <coughs> uh, I've got a fan I'm on to keep me from. Getting too hot, but it's drying in my throat. <coughs> <coughs> okay. <coughs> Processor numlock. Okay. USB options. Enable USB. Don't want to disable that. Okay. Enable. Okay. Make sure it's still enabled. Okay. Oh, USB disabled. That must be a separate area to disable. Legacy USB disabled. Wow. Legacy USB disabled. USB 2.0 controller. Remove flash media boot sequence. Huh. Oh, removable. Yeah, that's the way I want it. Because you can put a USB in the... It's inside of it, but you can put a... Well, or you can put them... Actually, I don't think they work in the front, but they work in the back. You can put them in the back and boot to a USB stick. Okay, USB 2.0 con controller enabled. USB legacy is disabled. Does crazy things. Jumps around and stuff, making me wonder what's going on. I want that to be on. Okay, there we go. USB enabled. Enabled. That may be why my keyboard quit working. Because my keyboard is so old, it's a USB uh, 1. That's why I went in here. I didn't say that. Enabled. Okay, I think it might have been on legacy USB disabled. That must have been what it was. Okay, it's kind of weird the way this works. 2.0 controller enabled. Okay, real fast media. That's the way I want that. Disk drive first. Okay. All right. Processor options. Not going to mess with that. Numlock. Power on state. It's been the way I want it. I don't want to mess with that. I'm not using any serial ports now. I don't know if I, I probably don't need to mess with anything if I even if I wanted to use them. Power management. I'll look at it. Balanced power. Yeah. If you power regulator, redundant power supply mode, advanced power management option. I'm going to leave it like it is. I believe it's still where I want it. PCI, PCI device enable, disable. Okay, all the PCI slots are enabled. Multifunction one gigabyte adapter port. I don't know if that's part to do with the ILO. There's a battery backup on the ILO, the RAID adapter. This one here. It's all enabled, and that's what I want. Okay. Standard boot order. We'll look at it. 
CD, floppy, don't have a CD drive. Floppy, don't have a floppy. USB, hard drive, PCI enabled, HP, PCI multifunction, one gigabyte adapter port. Hmm. Well, it's been working perfectly, but I would. That's a different. Okay, it says one gigabyte, but that's not the P4 to 9. Yeah, HP NC. 382i. Okay, that's. I wonder if I even actually have. Do I have that? I don't remember seeing any kind of PCI. Okay, PCIe. There must be a place you could. I was kind of wondering about that since I'm having trouble with the hard drives. There must might be a P. Maybe any of. The, I'm not sure if it would be all or just one of the. It says port one, so probably the first PCI slot would be able to put a, a it might be able to put a, a flash memory you know boot off a of flash memory I can't say the right word I don't I haven't I haven't ever even had a a flash memory drive yet other than you know SD cards and USB sticks boot controller order okay HP smart array p 410 i controller okay well that's the only option anyway Date and time, server availability, SR status enabled, timeout 10 minutes, thermal shutdown enabled, wake on LAN enabled, post F1 prompt delayed, power button enabled, automatic power on disabled. Ah, okay. Power on delay, no delay. Okay. I'm thinking in my head about if I ever do set this up as a well, if I set it up as a server, well, okay, I set it up as a server, but then if our power, it, it glitches all the time, and this thing will go down in a heartbeat. It'll go, figure it out if there if there's just a brownout on the circuit, it's on, not even the whole house. The lights, it'll go down when you hear lightning or something, or it's a beautiful day, it doesn't matter. Uh, it'll go down. Uh, and so will my, evidently my router and, uh, and uh, modem are on the same circuit. Uh, I, you know, I don't know where all the circuits, you know, what's, you know, like, go together in this house. I used to kind of know years ago, but I can't remember. So anyway, <clears throat> when it, when this server goes down, under, like whenever there's a, evidently a brownout, also my uh, modem and router will reboot. So, uh, <coughs> and the most it's ever pulls is like 400 watts. It generally runs at 2 to 250 watts, so it's not too much because all the lights in the house are, or LEDs, you know, now and everything, so there's not near the draw. I mean, 400 watts is four 100 watt light bulbs, you know. We we used to have the whole house full of incandescent bulbs and no problem. So I was starting to wonder if uh, I had it on a different circuit, and, and but I was running it off of a ten about a ten foot a a, a, a uh, well, I was plugging. I'm still using the same uh, power strip. And it does have some protection on it, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and uh, it was running over to another power strip because it wasn't long enough to reach to the wall on a different... And I do know that's a different circuit. Uh, and it uh, was flipping the breaker every once in a while. And I finally decided, when you turn that breaker, it moves too easy. I think it's just about worn out is what the real real problem is. But anyway, I moved it. Uh, and what I ended up doing is putting an adapter in the light socket in the closet and plug it in there. And for a long time, I had no trouble whatsoever. And it never blows a breaker or anything, but it uh, it does brown out. And when it does, it's and I don't. I think it's just. Well, I don't know for sure what else. Uh, I mean, if, being that uh, evidently that I know for sure that light socket and and the the right side of my room, the way I'm sitting here, they're on the same circuit. Now, how many other things are on that circuit? It could be in a different room, you know. Uh, anyway. Okay, what did I, okay, I already, did I look at this yet? ASR enable. Yeah, I already looked at that. Okay. Server security, power on password, admin password, network server mode. Okay, I haven't ever done that. Yeah, I don't want to get a password in there. Bio serial console on EMS. Whoops. I hit escape instead of enter. 
We have 10 to confirm exit utility. Okay. Whew. See, it took me a while to, when, when something unexpected happened, it takes me a while to recover my brain and figure out what I want to do. <laughs> uh, BioSerial console port, serial console baud rate, EMS. Yeah, I don't, I don't even have any, I mean, I may actually want to do that. I have a backup battery backup outside that my old neighbor gave me, but the, bat uh, the batteries are bad, so I haven't got it fixed up and up and going yet. <clears throat> but uh, I may want to put that on there to solve this power problem because then it'll uh, and 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 usually they have a I don't know I haven't looked this one over good, but I've got a, I know I have a two of them. One anyway, one or the other of those. One I, other one I have it's outside in my van hooked up to some big old diesel truck batteries, and I used it to keep them charged, but I haven't messed with, with, some, messed with it in years, but uh, just pulled the beeper out of it. Off of the, it was a plug-in beeper. I pulled it out so it wouldn't drive you crazy, but you could run off of two of those uh, big old, well, they're, uh, I, think, I think they're interstate batteries, 1,000 cranking uh, amp diesel truck batteries. <clears throat> so you put two of them together to get 24 volts, and uh, I could run... Uh, computer and a monitor, CRT monitor, for about two, two and a half hours on it. Just playing at the time, you know. Anyway, server, I was thinking about using, I have eight of them, and they're all in there, and I was thinking about using them as, can't, you know, turn the van, in, it's a good times van, and it's already got a bed in it and stuff, but I was thinking about making it into a full-fledged camper. But they're so heavy, they're really too heavy to haul, to, for it to haul around. It's a three-quarter ton, but that's a, about 800 pounds of weight right there. <coughs> Server asset text, server info text, administrator info text, service contact text. Oh, custom post message. Huh. Oh, I see. I guess you can type stuff in there. It looks really weird, but you see the bottom blue thing that usually has information? It's uh, It's empty. Oh, you can type in there. Oh, I'm not going to do anything uh, other than what I'm trying to do, and that's figure out uh, if I ha if if the uh, if the data recovery has been run. At, you know, if it's being run, like I th I think it's been running. I thought it was. So I'll make sure whether I have to turn it on manually or if it runs automatically, like I thought. Uh, before it looked like I hit F1 and then it ran it. That's what it looked like, and the lights would the grill lights would. Uh, all the hard drives that are in there would be blinking green, except for the one that was having trouble. It's turning, blinking a yellow. That's blinking, uh, showing up yellow. It would blink steadily at a different, you know, at a different rate. It looks like it. if you've watched. Well, I've learned this from Morton, but anyway, it looks like it's the one being restored, uh, or restored from, yeah, even restored, I guess, from the others, yeah, and the raid, you know. Okay, now what's this? ROM well, options. Okay, I haven't looked at this yet. Uh, I'll just exit that. I don't want to mess with that. I want to see what enable, disable, okay. Whoops, what did I do now? Oh, I get too fast on the buttons and mess up. Those are some things, the virtual uh, ISO and stuff like that is stuff I want to be able to do and I haven't got it working yet. The big problem with that is this, is a, it's, it was, this server was built in 2010, so you have to have like, the newest, you have to have Java, or the Microsoft framework, I think, .NET framework, but the oh, uh, Java 6 is the newest one you can use, and so I ended up setting up a, a, a virtual machine on here inside my Fedora 32 to run uh, 